Of the 90 or so active locomotives on the MBTA commuter rail's entire fleet, each one tells its own unique story. A whole lot can happen in just one month to a railroad locomotive, and following just one around can teach you a bunch about how the railroad works. So with that, I welcome you to episode one of A Month in the Life, the HSP 46. The life cycle of an HSP-46 begins in Reedville Yard, the Southside's main maintenance and set building facility. Let's call this our home base. This HSP-46, number 2022, has been running on the south side for a couple of months after receiving its 92-day inspection at the Boston Engine Terminal, or BET, in Somerville just a few months ago. A typical revenue day for this HSP-46 depends on where its set of equipment lives on the equipment cycle. One day it could be cycling through trains on the Worcester and Providence lines, and the next day running on old colony trains. The people over at Keolis construct these cycles in order to always have an organized flow of equipment across the north and south sides individually. The benefit of equipment cycles lies in the fact that it is especially important that trains with higher capacity, like 7 or 8 car bi-level sets, are put on trains that demand such capacity. It wouldn't be good if a train with more flats was put on the busiest train of the day. Anyways, 2022 is getting tired, and it's reaching that time of year where it must receive another 92 day inspection. As I said before, these are performed at the BET in Somerville. Later that night, 2022 set will put away in Reedville and it will be taken off set and replaced with another locomotive. The next day, the Reedville switcher, MBTA commuter rail's Reedville yard to BET equipment shuffle, takes 2022 and another piece of equipment to BET. This is a hefty switcher with a total of four locomotives to BET and a coach. The switcher utilizes the only connection between the commuter rail's north and south sides, known as the Grand Junction, to get to BET. This is one of, if not the only, individual stretch of track on the system that you can guarantee any locomotive with at least a year of service has operated on. is now safe and sound in the BET, and it will be a couple of days until the inspection is complete. At this point, 2022 could go anywhere BET chooses. If the north side is down a locomotive, 2022 could get sent in service on a north side set. If the south side is down a locomotive, it could very well get sent back. And it sounds like a locomotive on the south side has just broken down, and a spare will be needed. So. 2022 will be designated as a pickup for the next Reedville switcher move.
the locomotives taken on the Reedville switcher always face outbound. So, instead of showing its front like on the first move, 2022 will be shoving Long Hood forward on its return south. Once the Reedville switcher makes it back to Reedville, 2022 will be set off and placed on the next set that needs a locomotive. 2022 has now reached the beginning of our locomotive cycle once again. Speaking of breaking down, here's the locomotive that 2022 is replacing on that set. The south side is capable of making smaller repairs to a locomotive at the Southampton Street Yard, but bigger repairs must be handled by BET. It is determined by the mechanical department that this locomotive, number 2013, needs to be sent north for repairs. Later the next night, the 2013 is sent on the Reedville switcher to BET. Leading the switcher is BET in-house rebuild GP40MC number 1116. These GP40MCs and F40PH3Cs also have very, very interesting cycles of their own, so make sure to keep an eye out for their episodes in the future. The 2013's swift arrival to BET does not guarantee a swift departure. Depending on how serious the issue is, 2013's repairs could be put on hold for weeks or even months. Once it is complete, however, 2013 finds itself once again in a no man's land locomotive pool. This time, the north side needs a spare locomotive, and the 2013 is first in line. As soon as it's tacked on a set, it is sent with its very own set of equipment to North Station to make its first run. The north side also has its very own equipment cycle, very similar in function to the south sides. 2013's newfound set of equipment would be making its fourth outbound run of the day on 1109 to Rockport. Here it comes into Rockport Station. The 2013 looks quite modern compared to its GP40MC counterparts. HSP46s typically end up on the south side due to their ability to operate with automatic doors. However, as long as the south side has enough locomotives to comply with this feature, 
There is no reason to have 2013 catch dust at BET until the south side calls. Instead, why not send it on a north side set when it's right there and ready to be used? After a 14 minute layover in Rockport, 2013 throws it in reverse and heads back to Boston. Who knows how long it will take for 2013 to go back south. Maybe it will stay on the north side until after its next 92 day inspection. Maybe it will break down again and head to the BET. That future lies in the hands of time. I hope you enjoyed this video. I thought it would be an interesting way to put a spin on explaining how equipment cycles and general mechanical operations work on the commuter rail. The next video of this series will likely be on the cycle of the F40PH3Cs, which is almost the exact same as the HSPs. I am on the fence about posting this one just because it's so similar, so please let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I digress. So until next time, I will see you all again soon out there on the rail.